Ladies and gentlemen of Knucklehead Nation, I'm here with Karin Darabedian to talk about how to become an MMA fighter. Karin, you've been there. You know how it is. First off, I want to thank you for your time. Congratulate you on this beautiful gym. How are you feeling about this really nice gym that you just uh, opened? What was it, last week? Uh, we opened on Sunday. Uh, yeah. Thank you for coming in, George. I really appreciate you coming in. Uh, this is my first ever academy. I've been training since I was five years old, and finally, after almost 27 years, I get to open my own academy. Uh, so, well, you've here definitely it is, KDMMA. You've Thank definitely you earned in. it. Oh, dude, it's it's yeah. my pleasure. So, Karin, I, I wanted to talk to you, especially because you know you've been at the highest level. Um, I think you achieved your most notoriety when you were fighting with WEC, which was eventually absorbed into the UFC. Kind of, how, how did you get there? A lot of these kids, they ask me, they hit me up on social media, how do I become an MMA fighter? Kind of take us through how you got there. What got you into this? Well, uh, mine, mine was uh, pretty much just years of, years of hard work. So growing up at the age of five years old, I got into karate. Um, I did karate for a good five, six years. Then I got into Taekwondo. I got a black belt in karate and taekwondo. Eventually, I got into kickboxing and boxing. I have had uh, about 14 amateur boxing matches and about five kickboxing matches. And um, um, from what I remember, I won of all. I won all of them. So, you never lost a boxing no, match. No, not a, I was 14 and 0 in boxing. Wow. I think I lost one decision in kickboxing. I was yeah. five in, but it was it was amateur, obviously. So. Uh, but you, cho but you chose MMA. Why not stick with boxing if you're undefeated uh, in the boxing? The thing was, uh, yeah, so doing boxing and kickboxing, then I got into judo. I fell in love with judo. Uh, I did judo from the age of 14 years old at Sensei Goku Chavichan's Academy, Team Einstein. I trained over there since I was 14. Yeah. Got my black belt in judo. Got my black belt in jiu-jitsu. And everything, it slowly came together. I knew karate, I knew kickboxing, I knew how to strike, I knew how to grapple, I knew how to wrestle. So they all came together and MMA was becoming really big. Yeah. Started getting into MMA. Uh, and my dad uh, had a little thing about getting hit on your head as far as boxing went. He felt like if you box too long, you're not gonna go too well. So he yeah, was yeah. more into MMA. So it was, an okay, it was okay for me to go into MMA rather than boxing. So I got into MMA. Uh, I did really well, especially in the beginning. Uh, I beat some very notable names. Got into WC. I beat the former champ Razor Rob McCullough. Uh, it's, it's 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 daily daily hard work. I mean, if you want to be at the top, you have to work hard. You yeah. have to sacrifice. You have to watch what you eat. You have to stay away from parties. Stay away from get-togethers. Uh, uh, it's, it's not an easy life, but it's uh, it's really. It's worth it at the end when yeah. you get that win, when you get your hand raised. How old are you now, Karin? Are you right still now, fighting? Or, or? Uh, I, uh, my last fight I won, yeah. uh, so I'm not, I'm not retired, yeah. but I haven't been fighting for about a year now. Uh, I'm more focused on my students. I'm 31 years old. Still young, still I, I, young. I'm still young. I, uh, I, I feel like I still have a lot of fight in me. Yeah. I'm, uh, I probably will get back in and fight. Uh, I, uh, I just want to get some big fights. You know, if I get back in, I want to get into some big name fights. So. Uh, absolutely. And you um, were, I mean, you were born in Armenia? Is I was that born in Armenia. Uh, I was born in Armenia. We immigrated to America when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. About seven, uh, to be exact. I did karate over there as a little baby. Uh, <laughs> I started training when I was four years old. So I did karate back then yeah. in Armenia. I moved over here. I started doing karate over here again. So, yeah, uh, it was, uh, uh, growing up in Armenia, it's like uh, kids, kids all knew how to fight. It was, it was like a survival thing. And the parents, uh, everybody puts their kids into martial arts so yeah. they can defend themselves. Uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty much uh, that fighting spirit that comes from birth in a way. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of good Armenian fighters coming up right now. And mm -hmm it seems they continue to come up and you've seemed to add to that culture right i mean we've only been working together for about a year you've already put your guys on my cards i'm very happy to have them they're very talented um what can you tell me about the sport here specifically in the glendale area uh, the sport in glendale i mean it's uh especially my guys were they're all up-and-coming guys yeah. 
Uh, some of my guys, uh, I feel like, are world class already. You know, they have so much talent. Uh, I think within the next three, four, five years, uh, everybody in town and all over the world will know about them. That's how good they are. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here uh, trying to work with all these guys, teaching them as much as I know. I'm learning at the same time, you know, so coaching is a whole different uh, thing uh, from fighting and coaching. Uh, two different things. Uh, you can be a great fighter, but you, uh, and then you can't be a good coach. Right, so, right, right. So they're two different things. But uh, it's fun. Uh, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy the rush. I enjoy being in the corner of my guys and yeah. worrying about what's going to happen. Have, have that anxiety. So it's, it's all fun for me. I, I love it. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do anything else but this. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll 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 say that you know you've definitely impressed me with the the guys you've put on my card. So whatever you're doing, continue to do it. Uh, but sort of back to becoming. Uh -huh. A, uh, an MMA fighter what are the qualities you look for in these guys you know what makes you say okay this kid's worth training okay I'm not going to waste my time on this kid what are some of the things I you mean look the main for? thing I look in for a kid is that determination you know when uh, things get tough they don't break that mental toughness I think uh, uh, I don't I don't think that's that's uh, that comes with work too but a lot of you have to have that you know you have to have that toughness to go through the, the crazy training sessions the hard times in the fight when you're in that third round and you're tired, you have to push through. So for me, mental toughness, obviously respect. Uh, I, if uh, You could be mentally tough. You could be the craziest fighter. But if you have no respect, you have no morals, I, I can't work with you. Uh, yeah. I, that's, those are the main things I look into a fighter. They have to have respect. They have to have good morals. At the same time, have to have that heart, you know, that yeah. de determination to keep going, you know, when things get rough. For sure, for sure. It's it's been a a while working with you now. Uh, you've got some prospects. Who are some you want to tell me about in specific? Uh, some of my guys. Uh, Arthur Artunian. Uh, he's a one twenty five er. Great fighter. Great, Great fighter. fighter. Yeah, that kid's uh, improving just, by I mean I, leaps I, and bounds every yeah, time I, I like see him. Every too. day he's improving. Uh, uh, he's uh, he's been striking his almost entire life, but yeah. just within the last few years he started wrestling and doing jujitsu. And wow, he's gone worlds. I mean, the guy is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, look for him in the future. Uh, he's going to be turning heads every time he fights. So uh, my other my other student, Samville, Joe, all those kids are coming up. Uh, my other jiu-jitsu students, Chino, Steve Bird, all those guys, they're all phenomenal. I mean, they're phenomenal fighters, good grapplers. So look for them in the future. They're all coming up. Awesome. We're now, a new gym, but uh, with a lot of knowledge, a lot of years. So absolutely, I mean, you're coming. you're an affiliate gym as well, Highest, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, Team Highest. Um, uh, we this is an affiliate of Team Highest. Now we're the Brotherly Academy in Glendale, California. So uh, uh, even though this is a new gym, we have a lot. We have about 40 years of history in all of martial arts. So that's not a bad uh, affiliate to have. It is no, starting it's not, out. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> he's my backbone. So. Um, I also wanted to tell you, you know, or ask you rather, when you were coming up in the game, and I mean, you're only 31, but you've been fighting for a very long time, there were even less opportunities than there are yeah. now. Um, now it seems that there's slightly more. I mean, how do you see the game changing? Do it's, you think it's expanding? It's, How are you looking at it? Of course, it's expanding. I mean, it's expanding so much. Uh, I remember back then when I first fought, uh, I think uh, back then it was even sanctioned, so... I was, I was the second fight on, of the night. After my fight, the whole place got shut down. The cops came in. Oh they God. shut the whole show down. So it's, it's and gone this from, was this was here this, in L.A.? This was here in L.A. Just somewhere in Inglewood, I believe. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, so there's no sanctioning body back then. It was pretty much a ruthless sport. Nobody yeah. really liked it. I mean, with the UFC coming in, CSAC, I mean, Nevada State, they really brought in rules and regulations which made the sport to where it is now. Mm -hmm. And I think we're just at the tip. I think we're just, you know, like this is, we're just getting started. I think yeah. MMA is going to keep growing. I mean, if, if you look at MMA shows compared to boxing, boxing is, the highlight of the show is the main event. But as far as MMA goes, the whole card can be an MMA That's event. True. You know? That's true. Uh, the sport's only growing. I feel like fighters will get paid more There'll be more opportunities for them. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to keep on growing and growing. For sure. Yeah. So, 
I appreciate your time very much. Um, I wanted to also ask you, you know, you do, you've done some grappling, you've done some striking, you've basically done it all. What do you think is like the most important aspect of the game? You know, uh, I feel like uh, if you want to be a complete MMA fighter, you have to focus on everything. Uh, you have to have a solid foundation in one base at least mm -hmm. and add on to the rest. Uh, I think a good solid base will be a grappling wrestling base mm -hmm. where you know how to wrestle and grapple uh, and then add on the rest, you know, but uh, because if you could be a world-class striker, but if you come into MMA fighting and you have no idea what the ground is and how to defend a takedown, yeah. you're, in for, you're in for a ride. It's like a fish out of water. So uh, you, can't, you can't come in one without the other, but you really want to focus on one solid base whether it's wrestling or striking, you want to focus on yeah. one of them. Make sure that's your strong point and add on the rest too. So uh, you have to do it all nine, nine mm -hmm. yards. You can't come in there just striking, thinking you're going to make it happen. So, yeah, sort of like what we saw with Connor. And Connor, Habib, you know, I mean, yeah. I think I think he did a really good job. I was rooting for Connor, yeah. uh, but uh, just the wrestling level of that Khabib is on a different level, and uh, he just wears people out. And yeah. Connor wasn't expecting that, but. Uh, uh, even Khabib, I think uh, once he comes across a guy that knows how to defend those takedowns and knows how to strike a little bit, then he'll have a little bit hard yeah. time. So uh, Connor had the striking, but with the wrestling, he got tired and couldn't really continue. So okay. you have to be able to do all of it. You can't come in there thinking striking or karate is going to be enough for you. Yeah. That's that's in the past time. Nowadays, there's kids coming up, five year old kids that are already grappling, striking mm -hmm. on a high level. I mean, at that age, they know what they're doing. Yeah. So you can imagine what the sport's gonna be in about 10 years now. So, so definitely to the kids that wanna become MMA fighter and the adults, uh -huh. join a gym that kind of does everything, and knows what they're doing in every facet of, of the course, game. Of uh, course, it's always good to be in a gym where they've had experience in the cage. They know what it takes to be oh. in there. Uh, a lot of these places, uh, uh, with uh, I mean, just the jiu-jitsu base and they go into a fight. Isn't, I mean, it'll do good in the beginning, but once you come across guys that are high level, then you're going to run into problems. Yeah. So, I mean, pick and choose. I mean, it's always good to get around. As a fighter, I, I, don't, I urge every fighter that wants to become good, they need to get around. Uh, I mean, have your home base. At the same time, make ways. Go to, diff go to different gyms where there's world-class guys, different bodies, see what they do how they react to stuff. Uh, feel the pressure because every time uh, when you're at your own gym, you get too comfortable. You feel like you're at home. And when you get to a different place, you feel the rush of a fight when there's guys that don't know you and they're trying to take your head off in a way. So yeah. uh, it's good to get around and learn from other people too at the same time. Well, Karin, I mean, so much knowledge. I appreciate it so much. Congratulations on the opening of KD MMA. Where can people find you? Where can people come to the gym, social media, anything you Thank want you to so say? Thank you so much, George, for coming in. Uh, they could always find me at kdmma.com. I'm on Instagram. You can find me at my name, Karin Darabedian, or KDMMA. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we're in Glendale, California. If you guys want to come visit us, come visit us. Uh, just mention Fighters Rep, and I'll give you guys a week trial over here, so come check it out. Oh, man, yeah, thank so. you so much. And look for I us at Fighters it. Rep, because we're going to have a lot of guys coming today. Hey, I look forward yeah. to it. Thank you so much. Thank Karen. you so much. Be sure to smash that like button, and don't forget to smash that subscribe button to continue to support Fighters Rep. Thank you very much.